Yeah. Okay. Welcome. Thank you for joining us, whether you're here live or you're watching this as a recording. This is the WordPress 6.3 kind of release announcement where Anne McCarthy and Rich Tabor are going to lay out all of the new bits and pieces that we can manage to get in something around an hour, probably 40 minutes, and then a little bit of time for Q&A at the end. Uh, speaking of that, if you've got any questions, please put them in to Zoom. There are several people here who are going to try and make sure that those questions make it in my direction. And then hopefully if there's time at the end, we can collate those and then get them out um, and hopefully get them answered. So yeah, without further ado, um, I've already introduced them by name, but hello, Anne, how are you doing? Doing great. How are you? Yeah, great. Thank you. And also, hello, Rich. How are you doing? Hey there, Nathan. Yeah, I'm doing really awesome. Great. So it's my job just to step out of the way. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I will hand over to Rich so that he can take it from here. Yeah, uh, you know, Nathan, I'm thrilled to showcase WordPress 6.3. It really is a monumental release that marks the tail end of the customization phase of the Gutenberg project and sets the stage for phase three, which is focusing on collaboration and workflows. So some of what you'll see today is starting to lean in that direction. Uh, bef but before I really dive into it, I wanted to share um, that what Anne and I are sharing throughout all this demo is a collective effort uh, across hundreds of contributors from all over the world. And uh, for those folks, like you know who you are, and thank you for caring about the future of WordPress and really the future of the web. So I want to start there, but let's dive in. All right, can everybody see my screen here? Yes. Awesome. So one of the more exciting parts of this release is the addition of what is called the WordPress command palette. So this is accessible within the post and the site editor and allows you to quickly navigate and command WordPress. So you can pull it up using command K or control K, depending on your OS. So as soon as you hit it, you'll see this new dialogue right here where you can start searching for commands. If you let's push uh, the O command, so you can see that there's quite a few commands that lets you open up different uh, panels on the left. So if we go to pages, we can open up the style variations and we'll dive into each of these in a bit templates. Uh, but if you go into the editor here, you actually have a, a quite a few more commands because this is very contextual. So we can uh, go into here and then let me refresh here. You can go into the editor and then run commands like opening the CSS panel over here. Uh, let me see if I can get it open. There it is. We can also, I think Zoom is messing with my keyboard shortcuts here. You can also run run the command palette from this up here. So you can open it here, navigate specific pages. So if I go to my about page, I can actually pull it up within the editor here. And then also commanding the editor to do uh, other toggling options like setting the spotlight mode, for example, to where only the block that you're selected on is um, highlighted and you can also turn it back off so if you toggle spotlight off really the command palette is uh, you know the first iteration of what is um, going into wordpress 6.3 i'm really excited about the wordpress command palette api and how uh, folks can start leveraging that and plugins can add additional commands not only to you know open up different settings views uh, but actually toggle controls or fetch data to render like all custom post types or different um, settings within uh, a more advanced plugins and um, i even can imagine an idea where the command palette not only launches experiences but uh, maybe even holds experiences so if you're selecting an image and you run the command uh, or you run the command palette and you'll see maybe a transform command and that lets you transform that block into something else so there's many experiences within uh, the command palette so i'm really excited to see how this evolves all right, yeah, there's so a great dev note on the topic too that I'll I'm going to try and share, but I can't see a way to, to message everyone right now. But I'll drop it in in a second for anyone who's interested for the the nerdy details. Yeah, and and the API, the WordPress command palette API, is ready to for folks to start working with. Um, so that's that's ready for six point three and all these plugins. I, I'm really really interested. So if you do uh, add commands to your plugins, like please sh share them with folks so that we can get more feedback and continuously improve uh, where this is headed. 
All right, so this is the site editor view. There's a couple of enhancements here, you know, a, a quick one, but this is a nice touch is to be able to resize here. And it's a, a much better resize action than previous versions of WordPress. And um, it lets you see the, the really all the responsive views from tablet all the way down, just to see exactly what you need to adjust if you need to on mobile. We have a couple of menu items over here that are different and new. Um, so we have navigation, styles, templates uh, was existing, but it's been evolved quite a bit. Pages and patterns. I'm going to jump into pages because this is probably the bigger hitter here. So when you open up pages here, this is um, a relatively um, you know, new concept in the site editor, but it's not new to WordPress where you can publish pages. So within the pages view here, we have all the pages listed and now you can browse and then also edit pages within the site editor. So if I open up the about page here, I see my about page in full with header and footer, all the template parts, anything, anything that you would see on the front end of the site over here within the frame. And on the left, I have my details view where I have the slug. So if I wanted to quickly open this up into a new tab and view it on the front end, there's also the excerpt, some details. This is um, showing us a status, you know, the word count, time to read. Also, when was this last modified down here at the bottom? But I can go into this by clicking the frame, and now I can edit this actual post title and the post content. These items are split out here on the right, so you can identify what is editable from this view. And this title bar here at the top is letting you know that you're editing a page, and it's the about page. So if I go in here, change this to about WordPress, you'll see it changing wherever it's relevant. And then I can go in here and actually start manipulating the post content. Uh, so I can add any of my blocks. I can add any patterns. All of this is exactly like you would see in the post editor, but now it's accessible here in the site editor. Now, if you wanted to go in and actually edit the template itself, as soon as you click on any of the template areas, so like the header or the footer, You'll see this little notice here at the bottom. And we also have this button right here that indicates that you're going to, um, that if you want to edit the page template, you would click this. We'll click edit template. And now we have placeholder, placeholder content for the actual page. You can see here, we're now editing the page. So this is the template icon and anything that's purple is being reused across the site. So this is the page template that's being reused across all of your pages. So if I take this title, Let's say move it to the center. Um, let's go ahead and add the featured image block as well. And then I think I want to add some space here just to make sure this looks nice. And then down here, we'll rearrange this, make that a little bit bigger as well. And what I'm doing is actually editing this one template that'll be applied on every page. So if I hit save. We'll go back. Now I'm on my about page itself. I have the featured image title and content. And now you can see I also have the featured image that's editable. So I can click this, let's say add this image here. Now we have this uh, featured image that I can actually edit on my page within the site editor. And I can see all the elements of this template in context with the rest of my site. So it really kind of brings together, uh, or the start of bringing together the two editor experiences into one uh, cohesive experience while also putting some guardrails around editing templates that are applied everywhere versus editing content on this one particular post. All it's right, a so huge gonna... feature to have now to be able to publish posts directly in here. And part of what I think Richard were talking about earlier of the complete experience where you're able to do everything within the site or without leaving. And this was a big piece of feedback we got from the outreach program from the community. But that was the main reason people would be leaving the site editor and having to switch back and forth between the two. So this is definitely a, a neat thing and paves the way for the future, possibly with some of the template editor experiences whenever you're in the post editor and you can add the template there. There's a lot we can we can learn. Exactly. And it's really like browsing and editing is uh, is really nice, but then we're going to go a step further here and drafting. So I can draft a new title, a new page here. I'm going to do my page, create draft. And now I've drafted a page just using that same exact template that uses the featured image here. I can start adding my content to this page and save it. It's still a draft here, but if I want to set this as publishing, I can do so like this and now this page is published on my website and i can hook it up to my navigation i can put it um, wherever i need to uh, elsewhere so this really 
reduces the the amount of times you have to go in and out of all the complex areas of WordPress and kind of keeps you in this one uh, contained environment for you know, creating pages, uh, drafts, and posts that are published, but also editing them further. Um, it really is uh, a really is a very capable uh, engine for publishing, and I think it's a great improvement for six point three. Uh, and you want to talk about uh, the navigation front? Yes, navigation is definitely a hugely critical part of your site. And it's something that comes up a lot um, when we look at the site editor. And so now there's a dedicated navigation section. So before in 6.2, you had to go into a template or a template part and actually find your navigation for your site to make changes. It wasn't exactly clear how to access all of them. Um, there are a number of pain points. And now it is a top level item that gives you direct access and actually is contextual. So that's another thing that you'll probably hear that word a lot is contextual. And that's part of like the polish and refinement that's coming to this release. So depending upon how many menus you actually have, um, you'll see a different sidebar experience. So if you just have one menu, you'll see this, the menu listed in the sidebar. In this case, we have two. So you see them all listed there. Um, and if you have many, you'll see them all listed. Um, and depending upon the complexity, you can also have different views in terms of going in and actually making direct changes. But with each of them, you can actually select um, and edit in isolation in like a focus mode um, within the experience itself, which is what Rich is showing right now. Um, make changes, do whatever you'd like it there. You can go back. You can also drag and drop and move these around and just make really simple high level changes, um, kind of like the most common actions you might take within the sidebar. Um, and I love, this is another area that is a, a great spot to give feedback on, to continue iterating on, um, but it's a huge, huge step forward in terms of um, the experience of trying to find and manage navigation. Um, this is definitely something that came up a lot of needing to go and search through all the templates and figure out what your, your menu was. And hopefully this is um, something that helps make that a lot easier. And I love personally that it changes based on the number of menus that you have and the complexity. Uh, I won't go into the micro details of all of that, but um, expect the documentation to be up to date um, and for this to be um, streamlined. Do you want to jump into styles next? That's section. Yeah. yeah, let's do that. This is another section that's uh, new with the site editor in 6.3. At a high level, it shows the style variations that come with a the theme. Um, as well as an option to access the style book, um, which you can turn on right here, which shows all your different blocks and then the impact of those different style changes. There's also an easy access to get directly into styles as well as style revisions. So what you see at the very bottom where it says last modified a few seconds ago, it's just basically quick links to get you where you wanna go. Um, and this jumps into um, style revisions here, which I think we go over in the future. I think I jumped ahead. Um, I get too excited about this stuff. Um, but in the future, that whole style section, one of the things that's being discussed right now in GitHub is around having font management there. So you can imagine this style section being a home for more things in the future, potentially. Um, it's still TBD on how that will evolve. Um, and uh, basically, it could be a home for more, for more options in the future. And I'd love to hear feedback on this as well. This is another feedback on all of it, really. But um, this section in particular, I think for themes without style variations, what do you want to see? What would be most helpful? Um, how can we uh, elevate the experience in a way that is intuitive and makes sense and gives you access to the things that you want to see? Yeah. And That's Rich, great. Uh, do you want to jump into templates? Yeah. So the, the fourth item here is templates and uh, templates uh, really have evolved and some of the updated mechanisms for adding templates have been uh, quite enhanced here. So I'm going to go into here, adding a new template. Uh, we have this new modal view here where you can select the type of template you want to apply. Um, you can also create custom templates, which can be applied manually to any page or post when you're editing those. Um, we're going to create a custom template here. We're going to name it my custom template. Hit create. And this is where uh, we see something uh, pretty new here. Um, previously, in, in other word versions of WordPress, you would have to copy and paste and kind of get smart with when you're creating new templates um, across different templates. But now uh, we uh, WordPress is finding the most associated template. So right now I created a custom template and I have an existing page template. And it's using this, this as a suggestion for what I could start with. Now, you could also register and create your own patterns. So you could have different template patterns uh, that would be considered starter templates. Uh, so I can pick this here. And now instead of trying to 
bounce between two pages and, and make sure my templates are one-to-one. -one. I have exactly what my existing template was that we edited earlier. Now I can go in and make changes. So say I wanted this template to be you know, much more minimal, uh, removing the, the title and the featured image. I can even uh, modify the header here. So let's replace this, uh, say with something a little bit bigger, uh, maybe do it as big or as little changes as you'd want uh, for each template. And now this template, when I save it, will be available uh, for editing within uh, this templates view here. And I can also apply it to other pages now. We also have details views for templates. So if we go to index here, I have a post per page that is pulled out of the other uh, general settings within WordPress into the relative template. I can set this say to six, can disallow comments on new posts if you want. And let's uh, save this here. And now I have uh, six posts on my index view here. This is also neat where some of the areas that are used within WordPress templates are pulled out uh, for reference. So if you wanted to uh, identify the footer, you can just zoom right in on the footer and make contextual changes right here. Navigation is the same thing. This navigation block is pulled out into context within the sidebar. This is a, the first iteration in that direction, but ideally we could start pulling out um, other top level key features uh, like the site logo, maybe even site title when you're focusing in on a navigation or a header as well. Uh, that way you don't have to dive all the way into a block to change its, its settings. Uh, we could pull out the most important and significant settings. Yeah, and as part of this, the details view in particular, but some of the stuff that's come up and that there's an ongoing discussion about is continuing to surface the reading settings and making that as intuitive as possible. Um, and another thing that I'm really excited about is in the future, I think there's going to be some work around uh, turning off templates. So let's say your theme comes with a front page template, but you don't want to use that, being able to turn that off and then also just duplicating templates with ease and having that as part of um, the process of creation for sites. So I think there are there's some use cases where folks are running into already. Um, I don't want to use these templates from this theme. I want to use my own template, um, and that bleeds into the future of the future of blog theme switching. I want templates from this site or this theme, and I want to use them on my site, and I want to use these style variations in this theme. So there's some interesting groundwork already for the, for that future. Right. Yeah. It, it, templates don't have to be associated to a specific team or patterns or styles. So it's, it's really kind of got, made these all components of a site um, and a theme kind of just puts them together in a nice fashion. And speaking of components and compositions, we have the newest uh, item here and the last one we'll go over in the site editor and this is the patterns item. So WordPress 6.3 leans quite heavily on patterns and patterns are compositions of blocks that can be added to a page all at once. Uh, this includes both new patterns that are added to the uh, patterns directory and also the ability to create and manage patterns directly in the site editor. So here we have all your patterns set out visually. There's patterns included by from your theme and plugins that would be listed right here. Uh, for now, they're not editable, but uh, I imagine in the future we would be able to uh, replicate and, and edit maybe something similar to how template parts can be editable. And um, you can go through here and create patterns to add to your pattern section up here. So let's run through that here. We're going to hit this plus, hit create pattern. We're going to name it. I'll name this my pattern. And then we can toggle these patterns to keep them all synchronized across every instance that this pattern is in use. Um, one thing to note with synced patterns is that um, when you do edit one of them, they're going to be edited. Uh, the same edits are going to be applied throughout all the synced patterns. Let's create this pattern here and let's run through that. You start with a blank slate here. I'm going to pick an existing pattern to to roll with. I really like this one here. It's a, a cool uh, double cover uh, type design. And I saw where one of them is set to fixed and the other one's not. Let's go in and make some changes. Perhaps, um, actually, I want to use this new duotone control. This was pulled into the inspector here to, to kind of surface some of the design controls a little bit better. So we're going to apply the duotone effects there. We're going to hit save. And 
go back out to patterns. Now we have our new pattern uh, that I created, the my pattern right here. It's uh, purple again. Purple is synced and used everywhere. We're going to go to the home page and I'll show you how to add it. So you can, if it's a synced pattern, you can actually search for it with the uh, this uh, inserter here. So you say my pattern. And also through this existing tab here, and um, you, may, you may know that these uh, reusable blocks and synced patterns are very similar. And do you want to touch on the feedback that um, we received on that front? Yeah, let's dive into that. So with the concepts of template parts, reusable blocks, and patterns, a lot of confusion came up to the point that I created a user doc on it, comparing the different options and um, distinguishing each. And this release brings us into kind of a gathering of the concepts to consolidate how much people need to know. So reusable blocks as a concept is now known as synced patterns and patterns in general now become the way in which you create content that you can use across your site. So you can have synced and unsynced. Unsynced is how patterns have worked before where each instance is unique and can be customized. Um, sync patterns work exactly as reusable blocks used to work. So any uh, reusable block you've had in the past will continue to work exactly the same. It'll just be named differently in the interface. Um, and there are some nudges built throughout, like Rich is showing here. Um, when you first create a new um, pattern, you'll also see the option to create reusable block or pattern listed in the interface. And if you dismiss that nudge, um, that will just change to create a pattern. So I know this is an adjustment. There is going to be a WordPress.org news post on the topic to make sure we get the word out. So I know that's very important to folks. Um, again, there's an effort underway for documentation from the docs folks um, and the training team is aware. So there's a lot um, to update, but this is also a, a big step forward to consolidate the number of concepts. This is something that I got feedback on, uh, I think, for the entire three years of the outreach program. Uh, there's another thing we have to learn. There's another thing we have to learn. And this should help reduce that confusion and also house them in the same place and kind of get folks familiar with um, the different options. And honestly, I hope it causes people to use these synced options more. Um, I ran into so many folks who did not know about reusable blocks. And I think this is a really good way to surface a powerful feature in the WordPress experience. So I'm quite excited about it and I hope it helps reduce the cognitive load of how much that you need to know. I also wanted to quickly note with the patterns too. Um, one of the things that I am looking forward to in the future is also being able to create a pattern and assign it to a template or a post or a page. So that functionality of having like a starter option when you're creating uh, a new thing, like Rich showed with the templates, um, I think it'd be really cool to be able to create that in the interface. It's not currently an option, but um, I think in the future that definitely will be. Yeah, I agree. And it's really neat too. You could you could see these now visually. You could even delete, duplicate. So if we wanted to duplicate one of these, now we have two copies, and we could go into one of them and and make our changes. Let's say we want to change the styles of this one to this neat yellowish orange one, and save it. Now we have two copies of it. And uh, I mentioned earlier about the idea of detaching patterns. So if we're going to our homepage here, right now this pattern is synced. Again, we have this purple outline indicating that it is a synced pattern. We can detach it now. So detaching a pattern will now remove it from all the other instances that are synced together. And I can make changes to just this one. So let's go with this purple yellow one here and maybe change that to let me get something a little bit cool. There we go. So now we can have these changes only applied to this one pattern. So I'll save this page, go back to our patterns, and this existing pattern is still the same as well. So really patterns are are a much, really, uh, I feel like an advantage um, UI, especially for folks building sites. Uh, so you can build and manage the different components of a site um, with this uh, visual um, this visual library of patterns here. And you can also zoom into each individual one, make your changes, have them applied everywhere or not based if they're synced. Uh, it really just kind of abstracts the complexities of uh, sometimes of an entire page of blocks uh, into one component of blocks. Uh, so I'm really excited about this uh, patterns work that's been going on. And there's even future uh, ideas and implementations around potentially having partial syncing where some parts of a pattern could be synced together. Um, like maybe 
maybe the text could be changed or maybe the styles are all the same um, or maybe the opposite. Uh, there's, there's a lot of ways that we can work with um, on the idea of syncing and partially syncing, uh, but for now they're, they're one-to-one -one copies or not at all. And um, I'm really uh, intrigued on the direction of, of what that's gonna roll. All right, so that's it for diving into the site editor. Um, I wanted to do a, a little segment on design and blocks though. Uh, and do you want to kick off, um, I think yeah. we'll cover some revision okay. stuff? Yeah, let's actually dive into the revisions because I am beyond stoked about the revisions and we've gotten really good feedback around this timeline view. So kind of like we briefly <laughs> revealed earlier, um, you can actually go back in time and look at how your site um, appeared before and it shows who made the changes when um, you'll see this site if you <laughs> scroll for a really long time we've edited this <laughs> site over and over and over again um, i've actually used it for some calls for testing um, and we used it for the last demo which is pretty cool um, but there is uh, some work being done around template and template part revisions too that did not make it into this release but that i expect in the future and these things combined to have a really robust revision system um, just makes the site editor more powerful and more trustworthy, for lack of a better word. You want to be able to roll back. You want to be able to have access to, to changes that have been made. And the visual way that we're showing these style revisions, I think, is a really interesting look um, at what could possibly be explored for the future with phase three. There's a whole post dedicated to revisions that I'll drop in a second when we're done yammering um, about revisions. And I think the more feedback we can get on that and the more we can kind of see what works about this visual system, um, the more it'll pave the way for the future around there. So I'm very excited about star revisions in the future template and template part revisions. Um, Rich, are you cool with showing them the deep linking in the style? Yeah. So if you go to blocks here. Um, yeah, so one of the things I love if you're trying to have this is like a quality of life um, you basically can open up styles and then turn on the style book or go to the block section and just click on each individual block. So this works whether the style book is on or off and you just click on a block on your page. Um, but it opens up the specific settings for that block so you can just edit quickly and directly, um, which I find to be just, I don't know, a really nice <laughs> quality of life improvement um, and allows you to make changes quickly um, to exactly what you want um, in the context of the page, which is also really cool. And of course, these changes are applied globally, but it does allow you to get um, a very quick and fast look um, and I think this is one of those features that folks might miss. So I was wanting to specifically call it out. Um, I'd also love to dig into some of the top toolbar enhancements, if you don't mind turning that on. Sure. It feels like a magic show. Um, <laughs> so the top toolbar got some improvements. And the top toolbar, if you haven't used it, it's basically an option that when enabled, allows you to access um, all the block and document tools in one place at the top of the editor. So it's a way to just have it up there at all times um, for you to use. And this option was enhanced and kind of brought into uh, the new site editor features so that it works nicely with the title bar. It allows you to have a parent selector, which is I think what Rich was about to show. Um, and it basically allows for specific options when selecting different multiple blocks. Um, it totally got overhauled in a really exciting way. Um, it also allows you to have easy access to the undo and redo. Um, there's just a lot of improvements to make it a bit more elegant and um, yeah, user friendly for folks who want to use that option. If you haven't tried it out, I definitely recommend it. Um, with these enhance enhancements, I've honestly been using it more, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, I agree. And I forgot to mention the show and hide, which I think is what you were showing. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's a way to show and hide it um, in line with the title bar. So whenever you're in the site editor and trying to use it, um, there's a lot of neat neat features. Yeah, the top toolbar was really, really interesting, especially um, uh, when you're trying to edit. And, and sometimes, you know, some stuff gets in the way. And not so much here because I have things spaced out very well. Uh, but but there are times when it's nice to just have everything condensed at the top. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I think is pretty nice is the idea of um, the distraction-free mode coming to the site editor now. So this was only available in the post editor where it hides all the UI and, and makes things uh, distraction-free. Uh, but now you can add it, uh, apply it to the site editor here. You can still make any changes. So if you wanted to change this, um, make any copy changes, you can even replace an image. Let me drop this other image into here. You can 
replace images and uh, make you know slight changes and add blocks as well. Like when the inserter comes up, you can add blocks. Uh, but it's meant to be more of a, a trailer, a tailored uh, trim down experience that um, takes a lot of the, the UI away so that you can see exactly what, what is here and what you're doing and make some slight adjustments. Um, I think it's a nice way to, to really just kind of finesse and fine tune uh, your site. And then to turn it off, you just come back up here. And there's a, there's a shortcut as well, but you can just toggle that. And there we go. All right. So let's move into a few design tools. Um, I want to add a pattern before here that I created earlier. This is the my patterns that I've created. I'm going to add this in here. This is a neat uh, like matted uh, photo type pattern, and I, I thought it would be cool to kind of have the the blue uh, come into this area as well. That's just using a gradient with the hard stop, uh, but uh, that's just an aside. <laughs> the The cool part here is this uh, new aspect ratio control. So the aspect ratio control allows you to set an aspect ratio. We have a, a couple of defaults here, so we can do square, standard, um, three by two, two by three. Let's do like a tall one here and, and whatnot. And uh, it's really nice. It's, it's very simple right, for now, and uh, I think it'll continue evolving. Uh, but, but really the, the big enhancement on this front is the ability to retain the aspect ratio of an image when you replace it with something else. So let me change this to, to this nice image here. So the aspect ratio uh, is still standing. The height and width are set as well. And I could re replace that image without breaking the layout. So this will be super helpful for folks that are creating patterns, uh, especially patterns on the pattern directory where um, you might have imagery that um, like kind of like this here where it sets like the cool mood um for this here but if if you replace this with um without aspect ratio it could jump in size or it could be super small it kind of loses its integrity um, and this aspect ratio control maintains that as well you can also set it to contain or cover so that would uh, contain makes the image not distort um so that so it wouldn't fill all the way up a cover is is the, the traditional zoom in so that your image actually shows at the aspect ratio that you've selected there's been a couple other enhancements to the image uh, sizing over here, just cleaning it up and making it um, flow a little bit better as well. I'm really thrilled about, about how the aspect ratio improved. And I, ex I expect uh, this exact control to move to other areas um, and other media blocks uh, within uh, the editor. All right, let's go into a couple new blocks. So we're gonna go to our about WordPress page here. And this is the one we, we modified earlier with the template, but I'm going to do what's called, I'm going to add what's called the footnotes block to this page. So if you hit this little uh, more carrot and hit uh, footnote, after you select something, you'll have the footnote appended up here and uh, dropped in down here where I can start adding uh, some footnotes about this. Now, this is uh, linked together. And if I add a second one, they would be. Uh, linked as well and this is technically a block so it can be moved uh, you probably wouldn't put it up here but if you had a social or if you had some uh, separators or an author bio a block underneath your pattern you might you might adjust where you want this to go but now this block was added automatically and, and this was linked together so it's a really nice way to uh, to make what used to take you know i don't know 10 or so actions into one uh, where you just hit you just select it and and add the footnote And then we also have a new block called the details block. Now the details block is great for showing and hiding content. So let's take this paragraph, for example, I want to add a details block. So I'm going to add one before I'm going to type in details and then I'll put a summary up here. So we'll grab this text, move it here, and then we'll take this paragraph text and I want to put it inside this block. So technically it's inside the details block and anything inside of it is going to be uh, toggled via the details element. So if we come off of it, there's closed. Now it's open so I can see it. If I go to the block controls, you can also open it by default. This might be helpful if you're setting up an FAQ or you have a lot of different details and you want your first one to be open perhaps. You can also do some, some clever styling. So if you wanted to add a background and then Maybe add some padding to this as well. 
These padding controls have also been uh, improved where you can select individual, apply individual paddings at a time or custom to apply all of them, but where a block can determine if, uh, if, you, if it wants to connect the vertical and horizontal paddings as well. And uh, there we go. We have the details block. You can add more blocks inside of here. It's just an inner blocks component to where you can have different paragraphs. You can even put images if you needed to in there as well. So those are the new blocks added to WordPress 6.3, the footnotes and the details block. Uh, and you want to talk us through the addition for previewing and themes? Yes, I am also stoked about this. Um, so a longstanding uh, point of feedback that we've had as well was around the ability to preview block themes. So block themers were pretty upset that this wasn't an option because obviously you want folks to try out your stuff. Um, and then also end users in general who might want to taste the site editor and explore how it might impact their site um, weren't able to do so unless setting up a test site because it wasn't a way to preview. And um, a group of lovely folks came together and helped create the option to live preview and it's powered by the site editor. So you both are able to preview the actual block theme and then also get a taste of the site editor before switching over. Um, and this is just really a, a huge gateway open for a lot of folks. I imagine it'll help adoption a lot. It also helps clue you in that you are gonna switch to a block theme, which is something that we've also gotten feedback on. How do we tell people that they're about to dive into the world of block themes if they just hit activate? Um, so this helps give you a really good sense of um, how it might impact your site. And honestly, you can customize it the same way with the customizer. You can go through and make a bunch of changes um, and activate it. And I just, I love that it, gives you a taste of the site editor experience at the same time. Um, and it just solves a huge pain point for, for block themes and helps folks decide whether to switch um, without needing to do any extra testing. So I think this will be a huge um, feature coming to 6.3 um, that I yeah can't wait to see the impact of. And again, um, definitely want to iterate on this. You can see it says previewing, um, but if there's any suggestions folks have for 6.4 and beyond, um, to make it clearer, but yeah, you can literally do everything. You can start building out your entire site in here um, and hit activate and go. Yeah, and it's, it's really nice to be able to see all the entities, like seeing all the patterns that, that are provided. You still have your patterns that you created, but then if you go into here, you'll see all the, the patterns created by Frost in this particular uh, theme demo. Um, but it, it's really nice. And then you hit activate save and it's, it's there. So it's a, a, quite a nice improvement. Yeah, it's a huge improvement. Um, <clears throat> I'd also love to dive in. I know we're coming up on 40 minutes. I feel like Rich and I could spend um, 40 hours talking yeah. about 6.3. Uh, but I wanted to go through some of the wider core improvements as well, if that's OK. Um, so to start, I'm very excited next week around this time. I think there's going to be a hallway hangout around some of the performance benefits uh, myself and Emily Clark are going to host it. I will drop a link to that um, here. And I do wanna call Courtney Robinson also mentioned that if you'd like to practice and go through any of these features together, there will be an online workshop at the top of the hour um, with a link to the meetup group. Um, so I'm gonna solve that question real quick. Um, but that is a very great way to get your hands dirty and actually get involved in this. And, and you know, we're still are in the RC period. So it's a great time to also find um, any bugs, which is my favorite thing to do. Um, but yeah, WordPress comes with a, a load of performance improvements, um, specifically around load time for content with images. Um, there's a link to a dev note around that that I'll drop in a second, but the performance leads um, have shown for 6.3 a reduction for RC1, this is the latest. Um, they've been so great. They've been literally every single beta and now RC doing performance tests and really testing to see how each version is, is holding up um, and hot off the, the press. Uh, basically right now for RC1, it shows a reduction of 24% um, for block themes LCP and 19% for classic themes, um, which is really exciting. And it's always good to see this focus on performance um, and an improvement across both the block theme and classic theme world. Um, and I hope you join the hallway hangout next week. Um, I will jump a link to that um, now. Let me pull that up. Um, that's the performance improvements. And then let me drop in uh the image yeah so those are the two posts that you can dig in to find out more um there are also some neat improvements around rollback for manual update 
for themes and plugins. Um, so basically, if you are manually updating a plugin in your theme and the process fails, the rollback feature will automatically restore the previously installed version um, to basically keep your website up and to ensure that it still works for everyone. Um, this is a wonderful built-in feature to have in WordPress and something that I am really excited about seeing um, in place. That was one of the first things I ever did to break a WordPress site <laughs> was ran an update <laughs> without checking anything um, back when I was a student across a multi-site, um, which was not fun. So um, this is something I'm very excited about. Um, dropping support for PHP 5 is another thing I would like to call out. So the new minimum version supported will be PHP 7.0, but the recommended version, um, of course, remains at 7.4 um, and above. So I will drop that in real quick. As you can tell, I love to drop links so people have all of the information. Um, there are also a number of accessibility improvements, um, and that team is small but mighty, and I deeply encourage you to get involved. Um, however you can with that with that group of folks. Um, there, as you can see, we just demoed a ton of stuff. So a lot of improvements coming to the site editor, there's a lot of new features. And so as part of that, accessibility needs to um, also be focused on. And a lot of uh, improvements shipped around the site editor, especially around navigating between things. Um, I also wanna specifically call out some work done around um, the list view. That the list view is a super powerful tool for navigating complex content. And it's important that everyone can use it. And so um, a number of accessibility related efforts were completed there. And then um, there are some general block editor experience, lots of things there to go through. Um, and then as well as some other wider core around administration, upgrade install, and the bundled themes. I will drop a link to that as well. Um, one moment. Um, and just huge props to the folks working on that stuff there. Um, it is always uh, neat to see how much gets done in each release and to pause and actually um, celebrate some of the improvements and also consider what we need to do going forward. Um, there are also some internationalization um, improvements, specifically around just-in-time translation loading. Um, so it was basically firing too often if no translations were found. So there's also some neat um, performance improvements. Um, and then a new preload text domain filter was also introduced, um, which is useful for plugins to develop and test alternative loading caching strategies for translations. Um, so I will drop that in as well. Um, and Chloe mentioned here, but we will also drop all these links into the hashtag walkthrough channel in Slack if you're in WordPress or Slack, um, and it'll also probably be a part of the roundup. Um, but that is a very fast <laughs> look at a lot of the behind the scenes kind of infrastructure updates that you can um, imagine. And there's a ton more um, that I'm not even getting into. Um, around like different APIs being updated. <laughs> um, and yeah. uh, there's a ton of dev notes as well. So um, this is just scratching the surface of, of the high level items. Yeah, and, and, and really when you think about it, uh, every part of the site editor has been enhanced, I mean, every single part of it, like navigation styles, pages, templates, patterns, um, and then all sorts of editing capabilities are improved, drag and drop, list view, replacing media, some link control work. Like there's there's hundreds of other smaller things and, and things that you might not, uh, you might've seen, but we didn't talk about because we're, we're just in it and we're, we're, we're demoing stuff. Uh, but there's so much work that's gone into 6.3 really is um, really is a massive step forward for for editing and publishing WordPress. And um, I'm just thrilled to uh, to have been a part of this release and um, I'm probably gonna say the same about everyone here. And it's really, um, really something that um, I'm proud of and I'm excited for where it's going, but also where um, you know the, the next iterations and the continuous work uh, later on this year with 6.4 and then really taking off phase three. Thank you very, very much indeed. That was a full on um, expose of everything which is coming in 6.3. I know that you guys have put a lot of hard work into that uh, presentation, so bravo and thank you. You managed to cover a lot of ground very, very quickly. Just a couple of bits of housekeeping. If the if the chat inside of Zoom is is something that you are finding unable to copy from, fear not. Um, it's all going to end up in the uh, the Slack channel, which is associated with this. So hashtag walkthrough. If you want to go there, we will make every effort to put all of the links that you currently seem unable to get 
so don't worry, they will be put there. Also to say that um, if you've enjoyed this, but you had to divert your attention, it'll be recorded and it will um, it will be put. I'm not entirely sure where it's going to be put in all honesty. I don't know if you can help me out with that, but there'll um, they'll definitely be a recording made. And when that recording is made, probably the link will go into the walkthrough slack channel as well we've got quite a few questions coming in so we'll let's dedicate the re remaining 15 minutes to those if you if you feel that some of these have been answered already we can just skip over them but i'll just go through them in order um, i don't have any names associated with them so they just come as they come so number one is is there a way to get the left and right margins of the content space either for a block or for a whole page i think you did tackle a little bit of that um but yeah over to either one of you yeah, I'll share real quick and just pull it up here in the styles. You can select layout, then you can modify vertical and also horizontal padding. And this is site wide on every page. And within individual blocks, you can select the block and go over to styles. And down here, there's padding uh, dimensions where you can manipulate the padding on either side. So if you wanted to increase the amount of space, and you can do that uh, pretty much on on most uh, container blocks and most other blocks that have um, that fulfill the, like a big chunk of space. So the answer to that is a definitive yes. There we go. Great. <laughs> um, another question. Will we finally get a sidebar template part in 6.3? Uh, probably not an official one, but you could create a template part. Um, just like I showed how you can create patterns, it's template parts works the exact same way. And you can uh, house that or even use it as a, you can create a synced pattern and use that as your, your sidebar and put that on any template that you would like. That might even be easier. Thank you very much. So the next one, um, if you create a pattern, will it still be available? Should you change or update the theme? Interesting. Hmm. Uh, yeah, if you, um, if you remember when I switched to the preview of uh, the Frost theme at the very end, you could still see the patterns that I created in the site editor. So those do persist when you switch the theme. They're, they're owned by you. You've created them. They're not tied to a specific theme. Okay, moving on. I seem there seems to be some confusion, and it seems like you were deluged with uh, email or whatever it may have been around the the nomenclature of synced and non-synced patterns. Um, and the question is about that: Will synced versus non-synced patterns be identified visually in some way? I, I know that they're separated in in the menus, if you like, but um, is there a is there like an icon the, or something? The icon, yeah, the icon is different, um, so filled in or not, and then also just like they're separated in the patterns interface, you can have a, a view to see all, you can see synced, you can see unsynced. It's also named when you create a new unsynced pattern, it says like unsynced pattern created versus sync pattern created. It's all over the interface. And then you can also pull them in in different places. So in the inserter, you'll see unsynced patterns where you would see patterns in general under my patterns and there's a section. And then for synced patterns, um, it's reusing the reusable block section. So they're back where you're used to seeing them and you can pull them up there. So yeah, there is like a, a lot of visual distinction and um, there's still confusion there. Again, open an issue. Please give yeah. feedback. <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed, Anne, that you uh, were at pains several times to say, well, I, I wrote it down, you, you want suggestions. So yes. you know, if if mm -hmm. these if you've got any thoughts that you think Anne ought to know about, her door is w wide open, I think it's fair to say. And uh, mm -hmm. any suggestions that you've got will be warmly welcomed and I'm sure looked at very, very carefully. So there we go. Next one. Um, if I want to know who changes one block of the style book, this might be a revision where all blocks are in OK. Would be better to see. Would be better to see it for every block itself. I think probably we'll just tackle the first part of that question. Is there this some way of knowing of a, who did what? Yeah, this was a discussion. I think because I answered a different question um, about style revision. So I was trying to answer questions while we were going because I had a feeling we'd run out of time. <laughs> And so this one was about like, can we see style revisions for the style book? And the style book is basically just a layer in a way of presenting the changes. Um, it's not necessarily something that's separated out in the same way. Um, so it is not, uh, you cannot see style revisions based on that specific block, but you can roll back through the overall style revisions. And that might be an interesting thing to discuss on, on GitHub um, is having more granular control on that, but that is not currently possible in terms of like zooming into that specific block and seeing that specific specific change to the styles but you can see them in the timeline okay, um, but that you. is an interesting idea yeah 
Uh, just, just to say, we've got about 10 minutes more. That's where we're topping out. So if you do have any questions, burning questions, I think it's highly unlikely that you're going to get Anne and Rich on a call, both at the same time, <laughs> uh, available for questions soon, at least anyway. So if you've got any thoughts, any more questions, we do still have 10 minutes. There's a few more to go, but just drop them in and we'll hopefully get through them. That'd be nice. OK, so the next one simply says, from my testing, I found that you don't need to highlight anything to add a footnote number. Just place the cursor behind the word where the footnote number should go is that a hidden feature or is that a bug i would say feature though though it's yeah. more, much more intuitive to select what you want to apply footnote to i would say i would agree yeah i'm pretty sure that's how it works um just in general i think that's in, by design Okay, thank you. So moving on, love the new, oh, nice. I love a, when, a, when a question begins with just something pleasant. Uh, love the new ability to preview block themes. It's also on the radar, sorry, is it also on the radar to let people save site editor customizations to a new theme they are trying out before activating it and ideally share it with others like you do with the customizer drafts via a unique link. That's something that users really want and then a little smiley face <laughs> yeah there's an issue that i pulled up um that i will drop a link to um in slack that talks about this so there is like an overarching site editor and customizer mvp for basically compatibility and that was one of the things that's come up is around scheduling and saving there's another more i couldn't find it um while doing all this, I think the nerves got to me, but there is an issue around that of sa saving and scheduling changes um, as part of um, both the site editor and I would see that porting directly into um, previewing block themes. So um, not yet, so not for 6.3, but that definitely is something that's on, on the mind for future releases. And speaking of, I did want to note, someone asked a question that I answered already where it was like, is this it? Is this all? Is 6.3? That's what we're going to get with the site editor. And no, there's a link to um, an issue around an ongoing customization, which I'll also drop um, now, um, where work is going to continue going. So just because phase two has been marked as done does not mean the work is done. Um, and kind of like with 5.0 and the block editor coming out in phase one, work continues on there. And all of these things are blocks. And it's all about how they fit together. And so having this like uni unified approach um, allows us to make improvements across the board. So um, both of those issues are dropped below. I feel like a YouTuber right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I feel this one may not be pertinent to this, but we'll ask it anyway. There may be something that you wish to say. Um, is there any news regarding native multilingual support in core? I answered oh, yeah. that quickly, but no, I don't have any updates around that. I think that is still planned for phase four, but I do right. think um, there was some stuff with Network Camp Europe, uh, my jet lag brain can remember it, um, around uh, possibly some concurrent work where it's like as phase three starts, we kind of have to figure that problem out first, um, but there could be a future where, um, you know, towards the end of phase three, we could start doing some of the phase four stuff, kind of like the command palette was actually planned for fully phase three and we released it with 6.3. So I could see work like that happening. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next one is, why is it necessary to put template parts inside patterns? Because template, so question, uh, because template, sorry, because patterns are not template parts. I don't think it's necessary. I think it's possible. Um, the idea of template parts is very close right now to synced patterns. It's it, the the main difference is you can assign a template part to a header or footer or as a, to be a general um, a general template part. And I would say general template parts and synced patterns are are, all, are basically the same thing. I expect that in the future uh, we'll have the ability to set categories for the patterns that you create. So synced patterns can be created and added to the header category, and perhaps that is, is maybe that's the same thing as a header template part. Um, where you can have all the same uh, advantageous UI that you get with template parts, like replacing a template part with another template part, but it will just exist uh, for the synced patterns. So I would say they're pretty close to the same thing right now, but not quite there. Okay. A um, couple more questions. Oh, I don't know if this question is about to be removed. On the Google Doc that I'm reading from, it's suddenly been highlighted. So I'll go to the one below it and then come back to that one. So the next question then would be regarding the rollback of failed manual plugins and theme updates. This will happen even if the updates break and make the website fail. 
uh, with a fatal error, like some kind of recovery mode? I don't know if you can parse that question. I'm not entirely sure what's meant by that. You got any information? Yeah, I was trying to parse that as well. I am going to lean on the dev note for this. So I'm going to drop that in again, um, just because that would be, if you have a way to phrase that to the person who wrote the dev note, that might be the easiest way um, to get it. But my understanding is it, if it's going to cause an error, it will be rolled back for updates. Um, I do know there is some work around um, at the bottom. I will read this. Um, the above encompasses part one and two of the rollback feature. Part three, hopefully for WordPress 6.4, is the same process, but for automatic updates. Um, so specifically rollback part three, which is now part of 6.3, checks to see if that the updated plugin does not cause a PHP fiddle error when activated. If it does, this error is captured and the previous installed version is restored. Um, so all the rollback feature parts one through three are included for testing in the rollback update failure feature plugin. Um, so if that's something that's of interest to you, there is a plugin that you can actually use and install that I have on a lot of my test sites um, to help further this feature as well. Thank you. Um, okay, a couple left, I suppose, really. Hey, is there any option to apply global styles and then in brackets themes, theme.json variations to different templates separately? And then in a just a nice comment there, this person says, by the way, new aspect ratio input is cool <laughs> nice <laughs> yes it is cool um so there's not there's not the ability to apply a theme.json specifically to a template but there is explorations on the idea of theme.json partials and that is applying a theme.json array of uh, or objects of styles to an entity so it could be a template or it could be a pattern so that way you could style one pattern um, perhaps in the pattern directory and then when your theme inherits that pattern, as soon as you install it, your your styles can be reflected in that same partial. So there's some explorations for sure, um, but not it's not quite at that point yet. Okay, thank you. Possibly the final question then, unless there's a deluge suddenly very quickly. Um, with 6.3, CSS grids become uh, comes to the query builder. But what is the plan for CSS grid in the group block, rows, stacks, and grids? And will that be a full implementation or a limited one as the currently limited Flexbox implementation in rows features? Thanks. I would say that um, hopefully in 6.4, we could have um, some new layout tools introduced. I know there's been quite a few um, explorations uh, on that front. And we're at the point where you know, row, stack, grid, columns can can kind of become one unit in a sense. I don't know that they really would um, holistically, but you maybe you can morph between them, and it doesn't uh, doesn't change your content unexpectedly. And also, you have allows for more layout controls, like setting uh, the grid um, options as well. And I would expect it probably wouldn't be the most full featured grid to start with, but it would probably have more control than the query loops implementation now, which is pretty stream streamlined um, and trimmed down. Uh, but there's there's definitely an issue on GitHub and we can find that. And um, if you have feedback and, and ideas on how to improve layout across the board, um, that would be something that would be really cool to get into the next release of WordPress. Well, I think that's all the questions. And actually, as luck would have it, that's literally about the perfect amount of timing. It's now 59 minutes past the hour, according to my clock. So let's say that's a wrap. Thank you very much if you joined us. As we said, all of the all of the bits and pieces that have been dropping into the chat, if you've been unable to access this, uh, fear not. You can go to the you can go to, to Slack and you can use the hashtag walkthrough Slack channel. Everything will go in there. There is being there is a recording being made, and I suspect a transcript as well, and that will appear somewhere very soon and no doubt be posted about in a blog. I guess the only thing that it remains for me to do is to say certainly thank you to Anne and Rich for putting in a lot of time. Honestly, a lot of time. I saw the notes. Um, so full appreciation for that. Thank you. It was a really, really great demonstration of that. But also in the background, uh, Jonathan Meyer and Chloe for setting all of this up as well. Much appreciation to you guys as well. Thank, thank you, you, Nathan. Thank well, you for being a right. wonderful host. Yep. Yeah, yep. you're yeah, excellent. Thank you very much indeed. Well, <laughs> we'll see you next time, hopefully for 6.4, <laughs> but you never know. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining us. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you. Thank you.